is Tiana and I am a children's specialist with the St. Paul Public Library and welcome to another virtual story time. Give yourself a big round of applause for being here. I'm so excited for this story time today and before we get started we're going to do what we always do and we're going to look at our visual schedule for our story time, okay? So this can be especially helpful for any of our friends at home that get a little bit nervous if they don't know what's coming up next, okay? So we'll start with our Hello Friend song. We'll say hello to our puppet friend, Ursa. We'll sing a song to get ready for story time. We'll read our first book. We'll do a little flannel game. We'll do a little bit of a breathing exercise and then get into our second book. And for this story time, we're gonna make stories of our own. Isn't that exciting? And then finally, we're gonna say our goodbye friend song. How does that sound to everybody? Good? And you may have noticed, friends, that I'm wearing a mask today, and that's because we're modeling our COVID safety procedures. And you're gonna see why in just a second. I have a very special visitor here with us today. All right? So let's start with Hello Friends. And this song uses two signs in sign language. It uses the sign for hello and the sign for friends. Should we try that together? Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good. Ursa called and I just came over because I wanted to just stop by and see Ursa and see you as well. All right. Well, that's fantastic that we've got such a special visitor. And is there anything important or anything that you have today? Sometimes Ursa shares a letter of the day to remember. Oh, Ursa, you were telling. Oh, oh, that's a good point, Ursa. Oh, Ursa wanted you all to know that we are here celebrating Read Brave. And Read Brave is our citywide program that we do together to work together around a theme every year. And we work through five authors and their books, through calls to action, to just make sure that we are being conscious of some issue that's important to us as a community. This year's theme is owning our stories, and it's about owning our stories and building our city together uh, for the future. We know that we've had a tough last year. And we know that we all have a lot of stories to tell over the last year. And it's going to be so important to our healing. It's going to be so important to our kind of citywide reset to make sure that we tell those stories, to make sure that we own those stories, and to make sure that we share them together so that we can understand our common experience and move forward from there. Awesome. Well, that's so exciting that this is a Read Brave story time. Yes. And Ursa, you know, pizzazz points for bringing for bringing the mayor with you today to share that for us. She was, during the song, she was saying, hello, friends. She was trying to practice her, her own oh. you know, song. It was really impressive. That's wonderful, Ursa. I'm so excited that you're doing this along with us. And I think, Ursa, we're going to get back to the rest of our story time with the mayor here, after, since you've shared uh, our lead for theme. So thank you for that. But would you mind waving to all of our friends at home before you go? Can everyone say? Goodbye, Ursa. We'll see you next time. That's so exciting. Well, that was fun. Yes, welcome. Thank you um, very much. And friends, that's why I have a mask on, is because we're here with another storytime friend. And we're going to uh, go ahead and transition into a song before we read our first Read Brave Storytime book. And this is The More We Get Together. And we're not going to use the sign language for this one, but we're just going to sing together with the lyrics up here. Mayor Carter, are you going to sing with me? Absolutely. All right. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. 
For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Yes, is that okay? Yes, that is Fantastic. Good. Our first book is called Outside Inside, and it's a wonderful story that I can't wait to share. It's called Outside Inside. Something strange happened on an unremarkable day, just before the season changed. Everybody who was outside went inside. That happens in Minnesota sometimes. Everyone just went inside, shut their doors, and waited. Well, almost everyone. Some people needed to be where they needed to be. Wow, and I see all the healthcare providers and all the people helping people. Outside, the sky was quiet, but the wind still blew. And birds kept singing, raccoons came out, and squirrels played in the streets, but the cars stayed away. The world felt a little different. Inside, we baked and cooked, made music and watched TV. We read and played games. Some of us worked a little, some of us worked a lot, and some of us couldn't work at all. We all felt a little different. Outside, there were fences, both real and pretend. Swings sat still and slides were lonely. Bells didn't ring and halls were empty. We had birthdays without parties, shared words without sounds, and reached each other without touching. The world was changing a tiny bit outside. Inside, we waited, and we worried, we laughed and we cried, and we tried to breathe. We made things together and did things alone. We hoped and prayed and wished. We were all changing a tiny bit inside. Outside, the world kept growing. Inside, we kept growing too. So why did we all go inside? Well, there were lots of reasons, but mostly because everyone knew it was the right thing to do. On the outside, we are all different. But on the inside, we are all the same. And we remembered that soon spring would come. inside and outside. Oh, that's cool. The end. That's a great reading. And that was a story that I think we can all relate to, right? Mm -hmm. That was a story of, you know, the past year or so. And a lot of people who have helped uh, along the way are some of the people that you work with as the mayor every day, yes. right? Firefighters and police officers and first responders. Yes, so. and our health care providers and our doctors and our nurses and your teachers have worked so hard and librarians and people like you who do story time online and our recreation leaders. There are so many people who have been a part of this inside outside story and coming together and help one another. And one of the things that I want you to know is you don't have to be, wait till you're an adult to help people. If you own your story and share your story, it can help people right there. You can help your parents, you can help your teacher, you can help your brother and sisters and your friends. You can help lots of people even when you're young. Yeah, well, that's a great message to share. Thank you, Mayor Carter. And I want you at home story time, friends, to think about a time maybe in the past year where either someone has helped you or your family or you have helped someone and been a community helper. 
So share your stories at home, uh, or you can uh, post them and let us know what your stories are too. All right, beautiful first story. I think with that, we'll move on to our flannel activity. And this is all about how you can be a community helper, right? So this flannel is about sharing. And uh, there are a couple of different animals here. Uh, Nick Carter, do you know what any of these are? Um, I do. I definitely see an elephant with some cheese. Is that an elephant, friends? It's not an elephant. It's a mouse with some cheese. That would make a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I see a bumblebee. Yep. I think that's a dog or a bear. A bear. A yes, bear. A there bear. we go. Yeah. Obviously. And a whale. And a whale. All right. So we've got our, our little animal friends here today, and we are going to share some things that they might find useful. Uh, but we're only going to share things that rhyme with the names of each of these oh. animals. So you're going to have to help me uh, figure out. Uh, which ones we're supposed, what, what gifts we're supposed to share with the animal, okay? So we'll start with a little red pail. Can all of my story time friends see that at home? Pail. What do you think? A little are? red pail. Hmm, who do you guys think that should go to? Um, not the bear. Yeah, bear doesn't. Pear and pale, bear and pail don't. What about whale and pale? What do you think, friends at home? Do whale and pale rhyme? All right, I think you're right, Mark Carter. So we'll sing together. It's so, so much, much fun, fun to share. It's, it's so, so much, much fun, fun to share. share. I have a pail I'll share with whale. It's so much fun, fun to share. share. All right, friends. So that's our pail and our, our whale. Our next one is a big, comfy chair. Hmm, do you think Mouse would have a good time on that chair? No. No. Mouse and chair. What about if we, if we give two things to Whale, a pail and a chair? No, I don't think so. No. What do you think, Van Carter? Well, I think maybe a bear would love to sit in a chair. Bear and chair, what do you think, friends? I think we've got it. Awesome. So we'll give this chair to bear and we'll sing our song to share it, right? It's so, so much, much fun, fun to share. share. It's so much fun to share. I have a chair I'll share with bear. It's so much fun to share. Great job, friends. We've got two more. Ooh. This next one is a what is it at home, friends? A house. A house, that's right. All right. And what do we think? Who should this house go to? I see some hands at home pointing up right here. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. All right. I think house and mouse. House and mouse. mouse. So let's sing our sign. It's so, so much fun, fun to share. share. It's, it's so, so much fun, fun to share. share. I have a house I'll share with us. It's so much fun to share. And our last one, friends, we have a tree. A tree. What do we think? Who's the animal that hasn't gotten anything yet? Oh, do you see? They're pointing down. They're pointing down right at They're B, pointing right? Out. And B and tree rhyme. Rhyme perfectly. So we'll go ahead and give this tree B and sing our song one more time, okay, friends? It's so, so much fun, fun to share. It's so much fun to share. I have a tree I'll share with thee. It's so much fun to share. Thanks for having me. Thanks for beautiful singing and beautiful sharing. And remember, you can do this at home too and help people in your community by sharing. Right. All right. And we're going to look on our little board here. We've got a little mindfulness activity, and we're, we're just going to breathe together uh, to get ready for our last story. So, Mark Carter, would you take three deep breaths with, with us? Today? Yes, I'd love to. And story time friends at home, you can do this too. 
So we'll sit up straight in our chair. Make sure your feet are planted or if you're on the ground, make sure you're sitting up straight. And we'll take one deep breath in through our nose. Make sure to close your belly. And exhale through your mouth. And we'll take another deep breath in. And make sure it fills your belly all the way up. And hold. And exhale through your mouth. Bopped up my glasses a little bit, and we'll go one more time. We'll take a deep breath in your deepest breath yet. And hold. And exhale in your mouth. Right leg. How does that feel? How did that feel for you? That felt really relaxing. Yeah. So we can uh, use skills like this at home. And so for parents and caregivers, Practicing breathing techniques can help uh, you teach uh, with your children about uh, emotional regulation um, and helping kids develop skills to be able to deal with emotions that they have in healthy ways. Um, so you can always try those breathing exercises at home when you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. And it's time for our last book. And our last book is actually the selected picture book for our Rebrain program this year. And Merrick Carter, would you do the honor of reading it for us? I would love to. I'm so excited to share with you the selected picture book for our Rebrain program for this year. It is called We Are Water Protectors. You ready? I am. We Are Water Protectors. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together to stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums we are still here. It will not be easy. The four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. The end.
my water story is that when I was young, my dad and I would go to Minnehaha Falls and we would hunt for dragonflies. And so we always started at the creek or at the river and we would find the little nymphs. Sometimes you could even find the little eggs of the dragonflies. And we'd continue going throughout the season. Um, and we'd move from the, from the river to the, the fields and we'd see the adult dragonflies flying around. And so Minnehaha Falls really taught me a lot about life cycles. And that's one story about water that's really important to me. Mayor Carter. Do you have a story about water that where it was really important to you? Oh, you know what? It's funny. As I think about that, so many of the things in my life have been centered around water. And I think about going fishing at Como Lake with my grandmother when I was a child. I think about going canoeing with my father on Mississippi River. Uh, when in, He would take us canoeing and kayaking every single summer. And obviously, you have to do that on water. And I think about with my own children. We love to go to the beach, and they love to go swimming. And water has been at the center of our family and how our family creates wonderful memories together ever since I was a child to now when I'm raising my own children. Well, that's a wonderful intergenerational relationship mm -hmm. that you have with water. So friends, what's your water story? It can be when you play in the water. Maybe it's going fishing with your family. Maybe it's swimming. Maybe you're a little bit afraid of water. Maybe you learned how to swim. Let us know what your water story is at home. Um, and stories really are so impactful, and uh, that's really what Read Brave is all about this year. And Carol Lindstrom wrote a story uh, to encourage us all to be water protectors. Um, and so I want you all at home to know, too, just how powerful your stories can be. They can really mobilize people and and empower people and make differences in our communities so um, know that your stories are important and powerful and that we appreciate all of them here at the library right and i think with that it's the end of our story time oh this well this so was fun. fun thank you for the work that you do Yo, kids, can you help me just say a big thank you uh, to Tiana for all the work that she does and for these story times that she does with us? Can we do that together? Here we go. And it's not just Tiana because we have all kinds of friends who are behind the camera helping us do this as well. Can you do a big round of applause for them too with me? Here we go. And one more while I'm here because we have our library staff and our police and our firefighters and our parks and recreation staff and our doctors and our nurses and all those people in our community who are helping us get through our inside outside stories and make sure that we're still breathing all the way all through this and doing our mindfulness stuff. Can let's have a big, big round of applause for all those workers who have helped us get through all of the craziness of the last uh, several months. Ready? Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tiana. All right. Well, that was a wonderful way to send it off. And we will end with our Goodbye Friends song. And so this song uh, just uses two signs in sign language, the sign for goodbye and then the sign for friends. All right. Ready to try that together? Yes. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much, friends, for joining us. And remember that you can get engaged with Rebrave in all sorts of different ways. So you can always visit our website at sppl.org slash re-brave uh, for more opportunities to get involved with our programming. Uh, you can find out about our coloring contest, if you can see our coloring sheet in the back there, um, and all of the other programming that we have available for this. So. Until next time, we'll see you later. See you later. Bye-bye.